Okay. No? Oh, okay, uh, sorry. Okay. Well, you know, our friends over at Stivers Ford Lincoln, downright proud to salute great organizations in our community. Uh, and there's one organization that is really on top of everything and something that is going on that is really important at the same time. Uh, we all love talking about great local live theater, right? right? We do it on a regular basis mm -hmm. here on our program. But let's talk about something that has true importance here uh, on a national basis, but now on a local basis as well as Iowa Stage Theater Company is stepping up and presenting a very powerful production called, uh, well, the event itself is called hashtag me too times up Des Moines the production itself is a reading of the hashtag me too it's a one act play that's written by company member of <laughs> Iowa stage Carrie Scram thank you so much for being here thank you for and we have us. another very important lady <laughs> and a company member from Iowa stage as well joining us this morning Kim Hames who has an important story to tell because we're all coming together for a big cause yes. um, but how were you inspired to write this one act? Okay, play? sure. Well, I think we all remember when the news broke this fall and all of these men um, were being held accountable. It started with Harvey Weinstein. Mm -hmm. This was followed by Alyssa Milano's use of hashtag MeToo, which went viral very quickly. This is when we first heard about uh, Lawrence Nassar, the uh, US gymnastics coach who was abusing young girls, hundreds as we come to find out. Uh, this is when we heard about Kevin Spacey who was abusing men. Um, and also Louis C.K. who had his own um, odd story. And so I realized later I thought, I wasn't, I didn't consciously think this, but I thought um, this would sort of fade away. That this was something that would come up every once in a while, it would be in the news for a couple of weeks and then it would fade away. But then there was a morning in November that Matt Lauer was fired. And that was for me uh, the day that everything sort of changed. Because if NBC Studios was willing to fire Matt Lauer who had worked for them for 20 years, who they paid $20 million a year and earned them millions of dollars a year, if they were willing to fire him and not attempt to sweep this under the rug and pay these women off to keep them quiet, I knew things were changing. And so um, that's the day that I felt a very strong sense of urgency that we start to talk about this at a local level, that this is not something that just happens in Hollywood or Washington, D.C. This happens in um, cities like Des Moines um, to average everyday people. So um, I'd had a story brewing in my mind already before hashtag me too happened. I thought I would um, tell a story about three women who each had a different story to tell, but <clears throat> excuse me, the day that Matt Lauer was fired, I had spoken to two male friends, two separate conversations, and I realized this is where the story is, that um, we needed to talk about this from both of their perspectives. So. It's a one-act play about um, a married couple, a man and a woman. Uh, the hashtag Me Too movement starts. Uh, this brings up memories for the woman about something that had happened to her. And the husband and wife talk about it, um, and they each have their own perspective on what happened to her and what she should do about it. So it's meant to spark um, the conversation. Um, and then we have this panelist of uh, five uh, five women that are gonna sit on this panel, and I'm so excited. Can I tell you about these women? Of course <laughs> you can. <laughs> I am gonna tell whether you wanna hear it or not. I am so thrilled, I can't wait to be in the same room with all five of these women. They're just amazing. Um, we have Brenda Anderson. She is a licensed social worker. She's been practicing for 30 years. Um, we're going to have Kristen Anderson, uh, who in 2017, she was the communications director who won a $1.75 million lawsuit against the Iowa Senate uh, Republican Caucus. Um, we have Dr. Amy Bix. She is um, an Iowa State theater professor. She is, uh, focuses on women's studies and the roles of gender. Um, we have Vanessa McNeil. She is a woman who grew up in the Quad Cities, but she lives in Des Moines now, and she is um, an award-winning documentary filmmaker. Um, her last film was called Voiceless, and it was about um, male survivors of sexual violence, and she's currently working on um, a project called Grid Shock, which is about sex trafficking um, in central Iowa. And then we have my friend, Kim Hames. She's also a member of Iowa Stage Theater Company. Um, and I'll let her tell you her story. So the whole idea is to keep the conversation going here on a local front. Absolutely. And because there are stories that need to be heard, and Kim, you're so generous to offer up your voice to support this uh, idea and this uh, event that's happening. Yeah, well my um, experience is largely just in theater and um, about mm, in June of 2016, a sort of bombshell investigative journalistic expose was released about um, one specific theater company in Chicago, which is where I was living for about seven years after I graduated college. And I was involved with this theater company. I was ended up being in a personal relationship with the artistic director of the company who just used his authority, used his power 
um, to manipulate and abuse young women, used his status in the theater to threaten, and um, ended up being sort of taking down a, a bunch of, of that specific theater, but also just started the movement, I think, on a smaller level before the Me Too movement happened after. And um, I was one of four uh, named survivors that came forward in this article. And it sparked the uh, community to come together and write, um, it's called the Chicago Theater Standards, but it is basically an outline of of how you should run a company. There's a reporting structure. There are um, just guidelines for every aspect of it so we can avoid, I mean, stage combat at that theater was actual violence. It was not, it was choreographed originally and then this uh, person sort of just threw it all away and people were getting, you know, choked on stage. People wow. were getting, you know, leaving covered in bruises. And so it has things about auditions. It has things about stage violence. It has things about choreographed, you know, sexual content that happens in plays. And so um, I helped to uh, form the standards. I worked with uh, a group of women who took it much further than when I, I ended up leaving Chicago um, into this process. but. Uh, I'm, I'm very excited. That's sort of what I'll speak with on the panel is my own experience, but also on how we can take these standards and start using them at Iowa Stage and then um, hopefully around the, the metro here. Not to sound naive, but I feel like this is common sense and, and it should have been implemented from the get-go exactly. uh, uh, exactly. of what's happening with theater companies all across the country, let alone here in the Midwest. But this never existed before. For equity, for equity theaters, yes, there is a code of conduct, right. but for non-equity, which is just, I mean, everywhere in Chicago, no, there were no standards, there were no guidelines, there was no, no protection at all for people. And, you know, people don't want to say anything because they want to continue working. They want to right. advance their career. And so this uh, <laughs> did not exist in any form for non-equity houses. Unbelievable, which is re very reflective of what's been happening in Hollywood and all those stories right. we've heard right. as well. And right. it can happen on the local front. Let's learn more. Let's keep that conversation going. How can we do that, Carrie? Okay, so Thursday night, um, this Thursday, February Thursday. 8th, at the Come and Go Theater, um, the doors will open at 5.30 and our event will start at 6 p.m. It's gonna run from 6 to 8. Um, um, we are not charging the, um, any, uh, there's no ticket, uh, there's no reservation needed, but we are asking for donations. Um, we are gonna um, split those donations between Dorothy's House, which is a home in central Iowa that um, it benefits young girls who have been exploited by sex trafficking. And we're also going to give some of that money to uh, Vanessa McNeil for her um, documentary, which is about um, sex trafficking as well. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. iowastage.org for more details on about all the great work they do, but spe specifically this event coming up this Thursday. Free folks. Yes. Let's keep the conversation going. Carrie, thank you for your talent. Thank you so and much. Thank you for sharing your incredible story. You're watching CW Iowa Live, where we're going to continue to talk about things happening here in central Iowa. You need to know about. We'll be back.